right, Thursday evening, it's the 6th day of October 2022, and this is Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the Mahoning and Shenango Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. I oftentimes like to show you cool sunset time lapses on this video and on uh, on television as well. Let's uh, check out the moon setting in the middle of the night last night. This is about uh, 3, 3.30 in the morning. There it goes, looking west towards... Uh, away from Boardman towards Canfield here. Now we started the day with some sun, but as promised today turned out to be a cloudier, gloomier looking day than yesterday. But then the clouds parted for the last couple of hours of daylight for today. If you're looking for real interesting weather across the lower 48 states, you're not gonna find much. Some monsoonal moisture once again in the Four Corners region, cold fronts advancing through the Midwest. That's what's gonna bring us our much cooler weather tomorrow. But that is about it once again this evening. And you know, this is kind of typical for early October things are very quiet. Cooler air is on the move, though. Temperatures in the 7 o'clock hour eastern time uh, dropping from the 70s, upper 70s in St. Louis, and even 83 in Topeka, Kansas, to 47 in Fargo, 51 in Minneapolis. So, yeah, it's not hard to find the cold front this evening. It is chugging to the south and the east. Freeze watch is out for the uh, Mississippi Valley, uh, parts of uh, Missouri, Illinois, and Iowa included. Freeze warnings out for a good chunk of the Dakotas, Tonight, we're not going to be quite that cold around here, but uh, definitely a cooler air mass on the march. Now, if you have outdoor plans for Friday, a lot of the time it's not going to be raining. But at the start of the day, yes, there can be a couple of showers around. Most of the day, just cloudy and chilly and breezy. After reaching about 70 or so over the last couple of days, it's going to feel like it's in the upper 40s at best for the vast majority of the day. Now, some showers will try to get going, some lake effect rain showers here as we go into the afternoon and evening. First, concentrated near the lakeshore areas, and then as we go into the evening, some of these may try to sneak down our way, but they'll be gone by Saturday, and the weekend looks uneventful. Chilly Saturday, frosty, perhaps Saturday night, and then bright and sunny coming up on Sunday. All sorts of things to talk about in the sports world over the next several days. Uh, the Guardians hosting the Wild Card Playoff Series uh, starting Friday afternoon, uh, Friday afternoon's game and Saturday afternoon's game, both early games, just after noon, first pitch. And up in Cleveland, boy, it's going to be a raw and blustery afternoon with the wind blowing in from uh, left field. Temperatures kind of flatlining in the lower 50s. What about rain? I don't think it rains all afternoon, but I do think there will be a scattering of showers around. Um, so could there be some sort of delay or something? Yeah, that's possible, sure. Um, but it doesn't look like a constant rain or anything like that. And then, of course, we have high school football locally uh, Friday evening, and for the first time this season, we're talking about a chance for showers. We haven't had a drop of rain yet this season, all the way back to late August on a Friday evening, but that may change tomorrow with a chance for a passing shower or a sprinkle. It's going to be brisk and chilly. Northwest winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then the uh, Penguins... Back at home finally after a uh, long few weeks away. Uh, this is an evening kickoff at the Ice Castle Saturday evening, 6 p.m. kick. 50 degrees at uh, game time and temperatures under a crystal clear sky dropping back through the 40s. Sunday is the Youngstown Peace Race. This starts above Mill Creek Park, runs through the park, and it's a nice course this time of the year, of course, with the foliage. And it ends up in uh, downtown Youngstown. I'll be running uh, with uh, many, many others in this race. Uh, Sunday morning. It's a 10K. In other words, 6.2 miles is the distance of the race, and the weather looks perfect for running. I mean, yes, it's going to be a cold start to the day, but by mid-morning, we'll be approaching 50, and as most runners are finishing up, it'll be into the 50s, hardly any wind. Best chance for a widespread freeze so far this season across parts of the east this weekend, specifically Saturday night and Sunday morning. Now, interestingly, I do think the chances for a 32-degree reading are actually higher to our south and west. Not as high around here. You know, I think some backyards might flirt with freezing, but I think about 35 will be a good average Saturday night, Sunday morning. But in places like Cincinnati and Louisville, somewhat better chances of seeing that 32 degree mark. Now, this is going to be the only chance for uh, widespread frost that we'll see for the next several days. So we dip into the mid 30s Saturday night, Sunday morning, but a uh, milder pattern taking shape for at least a few days next week uh, will prevent any frost chances. That may change again with another cool shot at the end of next week and into the following weekend. Just a reminder that uh, we have a you know a wide variation as far as the uh, first 32 degree reading of the season. We had an early one 10 years ago on October the 8th, but on average it's middle of October, about the 14th or so. Last year was one of the later ones. In fact, two of the last three years, we haven't had a 32 officially at the airport until the first few days 
of November. Now, this is a pretty cool looking pattern. Yes, we're gonna have some fluctuations. It's gonna warm up close to 70 for a couple of days next week. But on balance, the next couple of weeks at least, look to be fairly cool compared to the average as the ridge builds out west. It's interesting to speculate if the winter pattern is already tipping its hand a little bit, at least the early winter pattern, dominated by a pretty stout La Nina, dominated by a lot of warm water in the northern Pacific, unlike last year when we had a cold pool of water in the northern Pacific. And we had a warm December last winter before it got pretty harsh for a time in January and very early February. This year, maybe October is giving us some hints as to what the early winter pattern may look like with uh, more pronounced ridging along the west coast and the eastern Pacific and maybe downstream troughs feeding some cooler air to the south and east. A little speculation on my part, and we're five weeks away from the winter forecast. Uh, we'll do that on November the 17th, but it's interesting to watch things unfold as we get into October and the colder uh, weather season in the northern hemisphere and how the different atmospheric and oceanic drivers are uh, kind of uh, impacting the weather pattern at this early stage. That'll do it for me tonight. Uh, no Weather Geeks on Friday. I'll see you back here on Monday. By the way, Saturday, the 8th, it, we talked about that being... Uh, an early freeze 10 years ago. October the 8th is also my 10 year anniversary here at WFMJ. I'll uh, have been here for 10 years on Saturday, October the 8th. You know, I spent 11 years of my career before I came here at AccuWeather over in State College, PA. I came here under the premise that I would be the morning, Monday through Friday, morning meteorologist. Um, but the previous chief, uh, Mark Kuntz, who many of you may remember, uh, was getting set to retire. He hadn't announced a date, but he was going to retire pretty soon. And they kind of thought that even though they hired me for the morning job, that uh, eventually, maybe in the not-too-distant future, I would make a pretty good chief. And uh, so they took a little bet on me, and I appreciate uh, that sincerely to uh, the, uh, the higher-ups here at WFMJ and I. Thank you, as always, for uh, following me online all these years and watching Weather for Weather Geeks videos. We've been doing these videos for a good nine of the last, nine and a half of the last ten years during my time here at WFMJ. Anyway, not to ramble on too long, but ten years coming up on this Saturday. We'll do more Weather for Weather Geeks next week as I begin year 11, and we'll have lots of interesting th things to talk about, of course, as we get deeper into October. Have a great night.